Okay, so now what are the hierarchies of manifestation? Okay, there are five elements in the hierarchy of manifestation. First, you have your feelings or notions, then your thoughts, then your words, then your actions, and then your habits. So these are the five expressions in the manifestation of emotion. And until people understand these five expressions and the interplay of these expressions, they will never be able to fully understand manifestation and orchestrate manifestation. Feelings are the lowest in the hierarchy of manifestation. Feelings? Yes. Now, the fact that a person feels that you will pass an exam or fail an exam does not automatically mean that you will fail or pass that exam. How do you know? Okay, very good. For example, the fact that a person, there are many people who believed that they would, they would go to an embassy believing that they are going to get a visa and they, they won't get it, you know. There are people who go to a contest, a music contest, a talent show, believing, very optimistic. In the last World Cup, the team that everybody felt like, man, these people are going to end up winning the World Cup, never won the World Cup. I have seen so many instances of people who felt that they will manifest a thing and they did not manifest it. And people who felt like they will not manifest a thing and they eventually manifested it. So it tells you something about feelings that I'm not saying feelings do not have any impact. No, I'm saying that feelings have a limited impact. Feelings are necessary, but they are not altogether sufficient. The fact that a person is afraid of a thing does not mean that there must be an eventual outcome. So there, there are many people who were afraid, really afraid of a thing happening, and it happened. But it's because all the laws were fulfilled. Mm. However, there are different conditions that have to be met. There's what we call environmental enforcement, mm. which means if a person is afraid of a thing happening, you're afraid of you having an accident mm. in certain countries. Mm. For it to happen, it will take almost a miracle in certain cities, in certain countries. Because the structures in those places make it difficult for there to be an accident. So there are many factors that lead to uh, manifestation. But the three main factors are number one, the law of hierarchy, the law of intensity of what you're feeling, and finally, environmental enforcement. When you follow the rules of life, you naturally put yourself in a space of joy. The nature of life is to advance. Eh? To be stagnant is actually to retrogress. Wait for that occurrence to be on that frequency. I can generate it. How do you generate it? Very good, very good. There are so many things. We see, when you follow the rules of life, eh, you naturally put yourself in a space of joy. For example, whenever I am in a state of quiet, mm. I get a lot of revelation. Revelation keeps me joyful. So I intentionally put myself in a state of quiet so that I'm consistently in a state of revelation. Mm. and then I'm consistently joyful. Do you understand? Mm. Do you understand? That's yes. it. So it's a choice. It's a responsibility. So I can res intentionally mm. decide to orchestrate my life such that mm. I will be very joyful at every point in time. Even when things that Even, are contrary to yes, being joyful. I'm not there. Yes. Yes. Maybe difficult. Or no, no, no. But you see, it's a matter of understanding. Mm. It's a matter of understanding. Once you understand that, let me give you an example. If you understand, the Bible says something concerning Rachel, Genesis 29, 31. It says when the Bible saw that um, uh, Leah was hated, mm. eh, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Yeah. When the Bible saw that she was hated, mm. that was when they opened her womb. So the prerequisites mm. for opening her womb was that she was hated on. What that tells me is that when people are hating me for no just cause, mm. heaven is on my side. Mm. Now, that knowledge should make me happy when people are hating on me. Can you see why there are some celebrities that no matter how many things you say about them, they will not, they will not, they will not, they respond. not respond? Because they have an understanding. That understanding takes them to a higher frequency. Wow. Do you understand? That understanding takes them to a higher frequency. They will never respond to you. They know that the more you are saying it, the more opportunities are opening up for them. Do you understand? Mm, yes, that's, yes, that's yes, true. yeah. So, you see, it is not what happens to us that makes us sad. It is our understanding that determines how sad we are. So, the same thing with anger. Mm. The same thing with anger. Mm. The energy I will release when I'm angry eh, is the same energy that it took to invent the email. 
So whenever I let out an outburst of anger, if I know that that energy can create my next billion dollar idea, mm. I will ignore that anger or that um, opportunity to get angry and concentrate or divert that energy towards my next million dollar idea. Do you understand? So that it's about perspective. Like, like potentially, if you say that, so if, if you let's say you're working on the ground, someone just gives you a punch, yes, on this punch, yes. So you should just say thank you and just walk away. Yeah. See, ask yourself if I retaliate, the, the devil of retaliation. Yes. But I'm saying that there are certain actions that you take that don't add up to you as much as if you took a different action. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. I'm driving on the road, mm -hmm. and someone drives in a very shabby manner. Yes, exactly. I can curse on him. I can say that you are an idiot. I can even say you are a bastard <laughs> in anger. In anger, yes. But I can use that same emotional energy to say that, man, my goals for this year, I'm going to fulfill it. So the energy has been released. But I can divert it towards saying somebody is a bastard or mm. saying that my goals for the year are going to be released. Mm. Yes, man. So when people do things that to get you angry, they have put you in an advantageous situation. But what are you going to do with that? Are you going to take it as an advantage or are you going to throw it away also sometimes these kind of things happen uh, spontaneously like you, it just happened yes. and you didn't even expect, expect. when you just give that yes. reaction yes. yes so how can you talk about how can you be able to work against that that spontaneous reaction that Very you didn't good. even expect maybe when you not thought of it you say okay maybe you, maybe you shouldn't have reacted this way yes. but that spontaneous reaction of the anger how, is already yes. out. How you can you, you can train your spontaneity okay. yes over time you can train your spontaneity Okay. Uh, yeah. How? And one of the ways is that when you get into hours of prolonged silence, mm. you get into a state of quiet that even your spontaneity is controlled. Self-control includes controlling your, spontan uh, your spontaneous actions. It's not just your, in quotes, premeditated or preplanned actions. Mm. Uh, so that's why we need to keep on training ourselves and training ourselves and training ourselves. But don't never believe that spontaneity cannot be trained or controlled. Yes, because why I said this is, you know, even if you remember uh, Moses in the Bible, mm. when Christ was telling him uh, to struck the rock once, but because he was angry, he has this, this, this habit yes. of anger. He yes. spontaneously struck the rock more twice. than yes, twice. And that resulted to what happened to him in the end of it also. Even though he is man filled with the, with the Holy Spirit, he's God sent. God sent him. He's one leading the children of Israel. Like, does that uh, save him from such kind of spontaneous act action, or does that make you an evil person when such kind of spontaneous actions take place? The key to that is uh, because I'm not in. Uh, we, we all know what happened in the story. Mm. Eh? So judgment is God's prerogative. Mm. You know. I'm not God, yes. you know, but we know what happened. We know what God did. Yes. But what I'm playing emphasis on right now is that we can train ourselves. Yes, eh? training, the training, you know, in aggression, what are the ways that, that training, you can train yourself? Yes, like yes train it's yourself. based on, it's just doing those same things that you do, but more consistently and on a higher level. So, for example, one of the things that I spoke about prolonged silence, mm. when you have a feeling and you don't express it with a word, eh? a feeling is a seed. The word is the watering of the seed. Eventually, mm. it brings up a fruit. Mm. Mm. Any feeling that you do not fertilize with words eventually dies. Mm. Yes. So, prolonged silence is a way to train your emotions. Prolonged silence is a way to train your emotions. That's number one. Number two, visualization. If you visualize yourself remaining calm, mm. in, that's what, you know, there are some athletes that when they are losing a the game, they lose it. Mm. When those athletes actually go for therapy, some of them go for training. But one of the things that goes on in those training is that they are trained to create mental models. They create mental models. And one of the things they do is that they have affirmations mm, that they say over time that I will face some of the most difficult challenges I will face. I mean, I will go through some of the most difficult challenges. Mm. I may have the worst umpire or referee against me, but I will stay calm. I will stay calm. Now, because, and I told you, I said a word that you intensely internalize becomes an image. An mm. image that you intensely internalize becomes an experience. Now, because they will do it over and over again, mm. sometimes they will start with five minutes a day. Mm. They will take it to five minutes three times a day. After a while, they take it to 30 minutes eight times a day. Mm. Yeah, but they, they, are, they are doing that. Those are their affirmations. Mm. 
they are making a mental model, a mental model, a mental model, a mental model. Mm. To the point that they are so familiar with it that when it occurs in real life, they have mastery. Mm. So I told you. From constant, that's uh, it. That's it. See, training, repetition training. is manifestation. So they grow into it. They, they grow, grow into, into it. You grow into it. Maybe sometimes, it. even if you fail or need, you just learn from it and yes. grow into yes. it. Yes. Yes. What yes. we were talking about, you mentioned something regarding if you know the rules of life, you yes. will not do something. So, what are the rules of life? Okay, let me give you about just three of those rules. Mm. Mm. The most important rule. Mm. Mm. To live your best life, eh, you must find what you are willing to die for. To find what you are willing to die for, you must die to pleasure. Say it again. Uh, okay. To live your best life, mm. you must find what you are willing to die for. Mm. The happiest person in life is the man that is ready to die for a thing eh, with the strongest level of intensity. Mm. So the, the, mm. the, the beginning of life starts mm. when you are ready to die for something. You are mm. ready to die for a, a worthy cause. Interesting. Mm? Yeah. Then to live, the hold on, hold on. Okay. Don't do it again. <laughs> to live your best life, yes. you must find what you are willing to die for. Mm -hmm. That's why you see that people that really attain peak performance, mm. ah, people that really succeed in life, eh, are people that they are they are so audacious. They are ready to do things that people are running away from. Kobe Bryant, mm. one of the greatest basketballers of all time, he practiced even when his finger was broken. Finger was broken. Ariel Sharon, one of the greatest Israelite warriors of all time. He was shot in battle. True story. He was bleeding. He mixed his blood with sand and ate it so that he would not die. And he didn't die. Mm. I'm telling you true stories. Hold on. Hold on. Mm. The greatest photographer of all time, Sebastian Salgado, Argentina. Mm. Mm. Genocide photographer. He's taking photographs in genocide regions. After a while, he begins to ejaculate blood. Wow. Because... You know what? Because visualization is powerful. He had seen so much blood that he started ejaculating blood. He goes to the hospital. The doctor runs tests on him. The doctor does not find anything wrong. And the doctor says that, listen, the reason you are ejaculating blood is that you have seen a lot of blood. He says, stop, stop going to those places. And he says, you know what? I will never stop. I'm ready to die for this. Wow. So does that, this explain, does that tie with your initial explanation of um, action, where, thought? Because what happened to him now was he has seen, experienced, yes. thoughts. Yes. So how come habits and the action didn't overcome that, that experience? Very good. The action and habits were not as intense as the thoughts. I told you the law of intensity. Okay. Eh? A stubborn thought eh, will humiliate eh, a gentle or casual habit, even though a habit is stronger than a thought. Do you remember? Can you remember now? I get it now. Understand. Never I forget the law of intensity. Never wow. forget the law of intensity. Wow. So intensity can overrule a habit and... A yes, habit. yes, yes. If the thought is stubborn, mm, let me tell you something. If a person is very healthy, mm. you have healthy habits, mm. but you have a stubborn thought telling you that you will, have, you will fall into a disease and die, mm. the stubborn thought can corrupt the healthy habit. Wow. If the habit is not equally stubborn, if it is just a gentle habit... Mm. Huh? the intensity of that thought, in a, a stubborn thought, will corrupt a casual habit. It's all about who is more stubborn. Now. Yes. <laughs> so that's why I tell you that a healthy goat will kill a baby lion. It's a goat. Oh. A goat will kill a lion. A thought can kill a habit. The same way a goat will kill a lion because the goat is mature. The lion is a baby. Mm, yes. Okay, continue on the rules of life. Okay. So, to live your best life, you must find what you are willing to die for. Mm -hmm. To find what you are willing to die for, you must die to pleasure. Must because as to pleasure dies, passion comes alive. Ooh. Say that again. As pleasure dies, passion, passion comes, comes alive. alive. Yes, Take yes, 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 yes. Right, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, when I was in university, mm. I had this girlfriend. Uh, her name was Tommy. Beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. The moment I fell in love with this girl, mm. uh, my passion for my studies just went down. My pleasure for her went up. My passion went down. The moment I eventually broke up after a while, my passion for my studies went up again. That's when I learned this principle, one of the most important principles of life, that life is a battle between pleasure and passion. Wow. Yes. So how do you break this battle more better? <laughs> you know, so what, what, what you find that people mm. do, high achievers do is that, mm they constantly reduce the level of their pleasure. Constantly reduce the level of their pleasure. Guardiola. 
one of the most successful coaches of all time. Eh? He tells his players that, listen, why you are a, play, why you are a footballer, eh? please just focus on football. After you retire, travel to anywhere. Eh? Visit as many places as you want. But why you are a footballer, just focus on this. Reduce your pleasure as much as possible. Kobe Bryant, I'm going back to him again. Eh? He will get back home latest before 8 o'clock. He wasn't night clubbing anymore. As, I mean, in, in, his peak, in his peak years, mm. he wasn't doing all that. That's why he had a very healthy and happy family. Mm. Yeah, you know, they know the pleasures. They know the difference. They know the things that contribute to pleasures for them. They know the things that contribute to passion. And then they limit the pleasures. The more they limit the pleasures, the more the passion Look at increases. What you can as pleasure. A, a pleasure is a destructive excitement. Anything that excites you destructively. Hmm? Cocaine. Mm is exciting if you meet anybody who has had an issue with crack cocaine they'll tell you that it takes you to a level of euphoria that you may never even witness with any other thing but guess what mm? it destroys your ability to think so people who have crack crack addiction forget what they're about to say look at what he did to magic fashek yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so so how you know is a pleasure is what he's doing to your brain if it's making you a new sense to the society, eh, it's a pleasure. What about you? There might be a normal regular one that doesn't make you a new sense, but that's uh, yes. describe this one. Very good. Mm. Then that means that most likely they are not pleasure. For example, if I enjoy exercise mm. and exercise helps my brain, even though I'm enjoying it, it's not pleasure, it's passion because it is helping my overall well being. If I enjoy watching TV, if it helps me to become more innovative, guess what? It is not pleasure, it is passion. Okay. Yeah. So anything yeah. that helps you become better yes. is passion. Passion. And not pleasure. Yes. Okay. For example, a bottle of stout, alcohol. Mm. Alcohol contains ethanol. It weakens the brain. So the brain cells just become weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Do you understand? That makes it what? It makes it more of a pleasure habit and a passion. You have pleasure friends and passion friends. They are friends that make you think more. They are friends that uh just kill your creativity you so know? now when you, if you do this example I, i've heard people that will say ah before i can become active to do this now i need to do i need to take two bottles of stout and they become active for you so that means it's feeling that the bottle of stout is feeling that passion so yes and it's that passion be, it's passion yes okay? that is not, yes that is not like that's the golden rule i'm telling you that's okay. the golden rule anything that makes you come alive to do better yes is a passion yes now okay you mentioned one of the rules one of yes the yeah. you, say you want to mention like three so continue okay so that's one of the most important ones so mm. what that means is that when you live a life where you know how to control pleasure mm. uh, control pleasure mm. and you can control it then you now gain mastery you now gain mastery over life mm. every day becomes you, you look forward to to conquering pain mastering pain challenges are exciting to you you are not running away from challenges. What people are running away from is what you are even gravitating towards. You know, that's number one. Okay. The second thing is that the second rule is that when things are very good, people are overwhelmed and don't know that things will be eventually become bad. Mm. When things are bad, people are overwhelmed and don't remember that things will eventually become good. So people's eh, cyclical nature of life is really very porous and very poor so when people when there's economic prosperity people don't save as much because they are overwhelmed they don't know that recessions will come mm. when people are in recession they get overwhelmed they don't know that they will become an economic so look at crypto now people are not investing in crypto mm. Mm. they don't know that it's a cycle then when people were in crypto and when crypto was booming eh, People didn't know that, listen, it won't happen for life. So you mm. don't just put all your savings. I coached somebody who almost committed suicide. Mm. He borrowed money from a bank to invest in Bitcoin. Wow. And the price of Bitcoin went down. So you see, when that, when that kind of man who has children, who is married, mm. eh, feels like committing suicide, and he says, life is unfair to me. Life is not unfair. You disobeyed one of the rules of life. Mm. Yeah, you disobeyed one of the rules of life. Okay. You disobeyed so one of the rules of rules. life. Yes, yes. Then... Um, I'll share a couple more of these um, principles with you. Uh, consistency gives birth to intensity, and intensity gives birth to manifestation. Okay, break it down. Okay, see, 
consistency does not give you manifestation. It's intensity that gives you manifestation. Let me, let me, let me, whatever you want to manifest. Do you yeah. understand? I told you that. Consistency and intensity are not the same. They're not the same thing. Okay. They're not the same thing. They're not the same thing at all. Let me tell you what consistency is. Have you not met people who have been teaching in schools? Literature teacher has been teaching for 20, 30 years. <laughs> eh? have you... <laughs> it's consistent. <laughs> I, have you not met doctors who have been consistent in their doctor in, in this thing? But they are still on the same level. You can be consistent and be on the same level. You can never be intense and be on the same level. Ooh. Intensity means that you are growing your consistency. Your consistency is improving. It's not on the same level. You understand? Okay. Because if you're on the same level, you're actually retrogressing. Wow. Yes. Because, because technology and nature of life, the nature of life is to advance. Eh? To be stagnant is actually to retrogress. Wow. Yes. So wow. in life, to advance, you must be advancing because stagnancy in an advancing world is retrogression. Wow. Yes, stagnancy in an advancing world is retrogression. So consistency doesn't make the difference. It is intensity that makes the difference, which means that if... Um, let me give you the difference between consistency and intensity. On the average, mm. doctors perform 150 operations every year. Mm. Surgeons, neurosurgeons in, in New Jersey. Mm? Intensity means that they are doing 150. Eh? You, you are doing 220. Mm. Do you understand? Yes. Mm. Let me tell you consistency and intensity. Mm. Thomas Tuko, coach of Chelsea, that man understands intensity. And that's why he's succeeding. He's very successful. When he's training with any of his teams, Chelsea, Borussia Dortmund, mm. he trains in a smaller pitch. Mm. Yes. He says that if people can do a particular thing in a small space, when they get to a bigger space and there's more pressure, they will perform better. Wow. Yes, yes. So guess what? Eh? Michael Jackson is going to perform a song. Huh? Intensity is that Michael Jackson will perform that song eh, with less time so that and less resources so that when he gets to the main stage, eh, it's chicken change for him. Mm. So intensity is putting yourself ability to function even with less than is possible. For example, who told you that if you give a rendition at home, when you get to the stage, you are going to give the same rendition? Because at home, eh, there were not 5,000 people watching you. Mm. So when you get there, when you add the nervous, yes. the nervous factor to it, yes. eh, you are going right. to perform less. So that's why a Michael Jackson would do a take 300 times. Mm. That 300 times is intensity. So that if I've done it 300 times, even if I don't feel like doing it on that day, I would do it. That's why some pastors will tell you they can't preach a bad message. That's true. Because, because they have intensively, in, they, have, they have owned it to the point that even on a bad day, you will say that someone was good. To them, they know that someone is bad compared to what they can do. Mm. But because they have mastered it to the point that even a bad meal, a chef who is a genius will cook a bad meal and you will know it's a bad meal. But it's not by the consistency of the person or hey, the preacher wait that now. makes it wait. intense. Very good, very good. Now, the difference between consistency and intensity is time. Time, your time. For example, if you throw 20 shots in 20 minutes, mm. that's consistency. Mm. If you throw 50 shots in 20 minutes, that's intensity. Okay. Essentially, saying, let me tell you I something. Let me tell you, the difference between consistency and intensity is when eh, your neighbor slaps you. Eh, and I mean, man slaps you. <laughs> if your neighbor slaps you, do you understand? Uh, you will survive. You can easily, your, your face will be normal. When army man slaps you from Okokobaiko, uh, your life will never remain the same now. You know, you understand? So that's the difference. Okay. <laughs> okay, now what is, what, 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 what is the law of predominant thinking? Oh, great. Awesome. Very important law. That law states that you don't get what you think about. You get what you predominantly think about. It's one thing to think about uh, it's one thing to think about um, maybe, ah, man, I need to get a promotion. It's one other thing to wake up thinking about it. You're thinking about it throughout the day, eh? and then you go to sleep thinking about it. I won't mention the name of a particular MD of a Nigerian bank. Mm? Even when he was in school, mm. eh? when he's sleeping, he will wake up and wake his other mates up and tell them that when I grow up, I will buy a bank. So it was, in you can see, that it gets to the point that even when you are sleeping, you wake up in the middle of the night and say that it will have taken you. That's the word. Obsession. Obsession. Let me give you one of the rules of life. Very important rule of life. Eh? Mm. The most important number in the world is one. 
the most important number is one. For example, if you have one desire, mm. Mm, you become unlimited. When you have more than one desires, you become limited. Because when you give your energy to one thing, your brain begins to function in the unlimited frequency. In the in the realm of un, un, unlimited possibilities. Wow. Yes. Yes. So that's why people who are very successful, if you look at their lives, they live singular lives. Now, singular means that the bulk of the things that they do complement each other. Their habits, what they do to relax complements their their um their main purpose in life. Their friends complement their purpose in life. That's like Bill Gates, all his friends were tech gurus. Paul Allen, do you understand? Eh? Um, Steve Baumer. All his, all, you see, so the people, the environment he had around him, his wife eh, was an executive, somebody that worked in Microsoft. Mm. Eh? Mm. So they put, so everything is adding and fueling everything, fueling it. Their um, conversations feed their singular purpose. That's what singularity is. Singularity is not just doing one thing because your body does not even do one thing. What your kidney is doing is not the same thing as what your liver is doing. What your liver is doing is not the same thing as what your pancreas is doing. What your pancreas is doing is not the same thing as what your tendons are doing. Do you understand? Mm. Your heart is doing something totally different. But guess what? They are all complementing each other. Each other. So it is one. So what I'm saying is, guess what? Let me give you an example. Albert Einstein, Nobel Prize winner, mm. greatest physicist who ever lived. Mm. Even his habits, he loved to play the violin. Whenever he played the violin, he said, I used to get ideas in physics. Do you understand? Wow. Now, if you play golf, and golf does not, and you are a carpenter, and golf does not help your career as a carpenter, you know what? You are not living a singular life. You are living a plural life. Now, wow. guess what? Power comes in singularity, eh? and then disaster comes in plural, 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 plurality. plurality. Do you understand? So, one of the keys to having an amazing life is that you must live a life where the, everything you do complements. For example, eh, if you are living, you, are, you, you, are, you play ice hockey mm -hmm. and you are living in a country like Nigeria where we don't have snow. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Your environment alone eh, is not complementing your purpose in life. Eh, it's competing with your purpose in life. Okay. Some people are in relationships that compete with their lives. That's why some people go get married and their careers will just go down. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Why? Is it because the partner or them? Yeah, it's the union. The union is not just. It's not. It's, it doesn't complement. It doesn't complement their purpose or what that what they have set out to do, and it begins to work against it. And that's where. So, in plurality, your attention. Listen, you need set your attention to be at a certain height. Let me tell you something. For water to become ice, it needs to get to thirty-two degrees. If it is thirty-five, it will still remain water. Water mm. to become ice mm. must freeze at 32 degrees. Once it gets to 32, it becomes ice. Eh? The same thing for your thoughts to become manifestation, it must get to a certain level of intensity. If it doesn't get to that level, it will not manifest. Now, when people live pl plural lives, eh, it gets them to that to, to levels where there still remain water, it never crystallizes into ice because it never stay sufficiently in that fridge it's in the fridge today it's out it's, so you are doing your work today you are, your frequency is high you go back to a troubled home your frequency okay. goes down do you understand yeah. so you are not consistently ascending to the level of frequency do you understand wow so even being a billionaire requires a certain frequency mm. and until you are set to that frequency it doesn't manifest but you, you talked about water that it can be at 35 and still remain water how can yes. you be at 32 and freeze but get 35 and still remain water yes it's supposed to be. no water only becomes ice at a certain temperature Okay. Yes. So that temperature is 32 degrees. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with any other thing, whether you are making boiling water. When you're going for the water to boil and steam, it must get to a certain temperature. If it is below, it won't steam. It won't but boil. It's above, but it's above, of course, it will, it will of okay. course. So but life is like that. For certain things you want to manifest, you need certain levels of intensity for it. Okay. So yes. what is about repetition and belief? Okay. If you repeat a thing, you will believe it. Yes. It, yes. To believe, it. So believe it, repeat it. Anything. If I want to believe that I'm the most ridiculous human being, or if I want to believe that I'm the most amazing human being, mm. amazing human being, mm. all I have to do is repeat it and I'll believe it. And I'll share examples with you. <laughs> Thomas Edison. Mm. He was actually poor in school. His teacher wrote a note to his mother saying that, take your child and teach him yourself because he's very dumb. 
the mother was an illiterate and did not really understand what he the teacher wrote. The te she thought that the teacher said, she thought the teacher said that, take your child, he's too brilliant. So teach him yourself. So she kept on telling the child that, oh, look at you, are too brilliant too. And he eventually became one of the most innovative human beings of all time. So you say if you repeat it, you believe it. Yeah, if you so repeat it. It comes down to your initial formula. What if the intensity of the thought is above or uh, the action or the habit is above the other one? Does it will it still, will it, are you still gonna believe it? No. What happens is that when you really believe a thing, uh -huh. mm, you begin to act. So you begin to go up the hierarchy. Uh -huh. You begin to act it, you begin to talk about it, you begin to and then when you, an action becomes uh, consistent, it becomes a habit. You know, okay. so I can give you some more examples. I'll give you my, some more examples. Um, Jose Mourinho was the coach of FC Porto, eh? and he kept on telling them that I want us to face Manchester United because Manchester United at that time was the best team in the world yes. Yes. when they won, and he wanted them to believe that they could beat Manchester United. He wanted them to believe that it was possible. And so he said, if he starts repeating it, saying it, mm. so the players didn't know why he was saying it. They just thought that he was saying it because he had the technical know-how, mm. but he wanted them to believe. So right from the group stages, he was telling them that, ah, I would like us to face Manchester United. If we face Manchester United, we will beat them. Mm. Guess what? When they did the draw, eh, guess who FC Porto was, um, was square to face, was pitched against? Manchester United. Mm. And guess what? He said the players were excited. Because they were already primed. They had been repeating it. They were already primed. They were already primed. They were already primed. Eventually, they beat Manchester United and they won the Champions League. Interesting. Beating Mon Mon Monaco in the final. Do you understand? Uh, so, how do, you, how, do you, how do you describe your intuition and emotional mastery? Oh, very good. You see, your intuition is a spillover of the intensity of your thoughts and emotions. Mm. Okay. You see, do you know what intuition is? Break it. Explain it. Intuition is seen what is invisible seeing what is invisible yes what is not obvious to what other people cannot see you just see it you're just having the intuition, intuition yes yes okay. we call it digested knowledge okay. uh, or we call it learning by discerning okay. so you are you are discerning you are discerning uh, so you are seeing the invisible that's intuition okay there are surgeons uh, that they see cases that they have never been taught in school what did they use to come out successful in those uh, uh, operations, in those surgeries? Intuition. Hmm. Yeah, intuition. The same thing with pilots who fly planes, hmm. who get to turbulent situations hmm. that they don't stand a chance. And they just use their, they, some people call it, we call it discretion. But at that point, it's actually your intuition. Do you understand? Hmm. Or a, a, a musician, they play seven different beats for you. And you just know that the fourth beat is the beat that will make the difference in the market. That's, that's, that's the hit. Do you understand? Yes, that's I can give you more and more examples. So not just, I can give you the example of um, a lawyer that just feels like, oh man, you know what? Uh, these are the cases that will set my company apart. Or this is the industry. I mean, this is the direction that we should go into. So many things. People who succeed in life are very intuitive. I'll give you examples. Warren Buffett. He's a and he's an investor, successful investor. He has successfully invested in the right companies. He makes more hits than misses, much more, much more. Part of what he uses, apart from going through their company records, is what intuition. Yes, intuition intuition because there are certain decisions that you want to make in life that you don't have enough data you don't have enough data you know you are going to have to use intuition for certain decisions in life if you're going to succeed i'll share another example with simon Cowell, mm -hmm. one of the most successful men in the entertainment in industry eh? he can see an artist and just know whether the artist will succeed or not jay-z signed rihanna after hearing her for just five minutes mm -hmm. he signed yeah signed her today she has sold almost 100 million records Wow. Yes. Today she's a billionaire. Intuition. Apart from that, you hear a voice. It just something just tells you that man, this is gonna work. This is not gonna work. Do you understand? How do you cultivate your intuition? Very simple. The more 
two things your intuition the more inquisitive you are the more intuitive you will be the more inquisitive you are the, the more, more intuitive, intuitive you'll be. be what do i mean if you look at people who are intuitive in certain areas mm. they have studied those areas very well eh? that you see an intuition is what we call your cup running over mm. you your cup is so full that it's running over you have studied that thing so well that you can intuitively say this is what will happen this is what will happen i'll give you one more example mm. relationship expert john gottman he says that when he sees a couple after five minutes he can tell whether the marriage will succeed or not mm. but you know what he has studied relationships so well. He has studied so many things. So, in fact, he wrote a book called The Mathematics of Divorce. Wow. Yeah. So, people who are intuitive, there are two levels to it. I'm still coming back. Mm. Just hold on. Okay. People who are musically intuitive are musically inquisitive. Mm. People who are commercially intuitive are commercially inquisitive. People who are artistically intuitive are artistically inquisitive. People who are politically intuitive are politically inquisitive. So you find that some of the the Everything. dead devil, the, the, some of the genius politicians mm, are people who study politics to a fault. Do you understand? That's why they can intuit it. But that's one dimension. There's a high, there's another dimension, and I'm going to give you the golden road to this one. Okay. Your intuition is a spillover. Of the intensity of your thoughts and emotions. Mm, the spillover of the intensity of your thoughts and emotions. I gotta break it down. I'll break it down. Break it down. Thoughts For example, emotions. if you spend a lot of time eh, thinking about a particular girl, mm, mm. your thoughts and emotions are there. Mm. Mm. Intuitively, I'm telling you, you can tell what she will like and what she will not like even without knowing certain things about her. Mm. I'm telling you, your intuition is a spillover of the intensity of your thoughts and emotions. So, intuition does not just happen adventitiously. No. That's what I have intuition by, by, by a lot of experience. Of course! Of course! You have performed so many surgeries mm. and then intuitively you just do certain things. Yes. Do you understand? Mm. Huh? Even footballers use intuition. You know, so it was a point where I said, Oh, I just thought, I just felt like I should flick it in that way or something like that. No, it's a spillover of the intensity of your efforts in that area. Now, uh, when it comes to emotion as well, we, we, there is a, there's what we call depression and disappointment. Hmm. How can somebody work around or overcome that state of being depressed or disappointed? Okay, very good. Now, you see, let's say this book is somebody's mind and this book is how many pages let's say 100 pages mm. Mm. 100 page book mm. Mm. let's say that depression means that every page is black mm. every page is black mm -hmm. i'll use myself as an example when i felt like committing suicide in 2005 six, seven, so i battled suicidal thoughts for two years mm. an analogy was given to me shown to me that okay your brain is like a bucket full of dirty water. Mm -hmm. As you begin to pour clean water into the bucket, mm -hmm. you flush out the dirty water. After a while, the entire bucket will become clean. So, an analogy was given to me as my mind as a bucket of 500 suicide verses. Mm -hmm. 500 suicide verses. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many? 500. Very good. So, I said to myself, I'm going to memorize 500 verses of the Bible. For each verse of the Bible I memorize, I'm emptying a suicide verse. Mm. Do you understand? So, disappointment. First of all, you need to find out what is the cause of the disappointment. What is the cause of the disappointment? If the cause of the disappointment is because... Um, uh, let me give you an example. There's a lady we, did, we dealt with. Mm? During the eight-month strike, academic strike, it was, it was eight months, right? Yes. Uh -huh. She wanted to graduate at a certain age. Now, because of the strike, she could not graduate. It was so long. She eventually went into depression. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, first of all, when you are dealing with anybody, you need to find out the cause of the depression. Mm -hmm. Then, most of those people, eh, they have the wrong templates of life. They, are, they, they function with the wrong templates of life. Do you understand? So, they don't understand templates like... Eh, 
every frustration is a billion dollar innovation. Do you understand? So they don't know how to convert eh, crisis into opportunity. Because let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. When you feel pain, mm -hmm. eh, the veins of your brain expand, mm -hmm. which is an opportunity for deeper thinking. And that pain I'm talking about, it includes frustration, disappointment, crisis, pain, agony, mm -hmm. eh, rejection. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. Guess what? The most painful muscle in your body to exercise are your quadriceps. But guess what? It's the muscle that pumps the most blood to your brain. Mm. Yes. The most painful muscle is the most gainful muscle to your brain. Wow. So when a child is left in school, I mean out of school, mm. eh, if the child says that pain eh, activates the nerve cells in my brain, pain activates the nerve cells in my brain, pain activates the nerve cells in my brain, when Isaac Newton, eh, um, you see, when his school shut down, that was when he invented calculus. Do you understand? So you see two people. One, your school shuts down, you go into depression. The other person, his school shuts down, he invents calculus. Which means that that lady who is depressed could actually invent something throughout the state of that depression. But it's because of the templates that you have of life, your, the rules that you function with, the mm. rules you function with, mm. the rules that you function with. Mm. Uh, that, that's those, what makes those will always come to play. Yes. In, in the way you in, in, the way you in, react, in the way you react to situations. Do you understand? Mm. Uh, in your dispositions, mm. in your feelings, mm. in your actions, in your plans, in your long term goals and all that. Okay, what do you mean by the extract the extractive executive? The uh, the extra time executive. The extra time executive, yes. Oh, okay. Very good. You know, I tell people that the most successful people are extra time executives. Extra time executives. Okay, what do you mean by extra time executives? Okay, they are extra mile executives. Extra mile executives. What they do is that. I'll give you an example. Kobe Bryant. Hmm? used to do extra hours of practice. Mm? Extra hours of practice. Mm. Um, if you see businessmen who succeed more than others, they have extra warehouses. You see, they always, they, their contingency plan mm. is as strong as their main plan. Okay. So, because when crisis happens, that's when great people become even greater guess what when we had a pandemic amazon became a wealthier company do you understand yeah so but what determines that is your contingency plan mm. your contingency plan so if you look at businesses that succeed mm. Mm, look at their contingency plan your, okay. we, your your strength as a person is not your strength in you just like saying character is who you are when nobody's watching so don't tell me about who you are when people were watching you who were you when nobody was watching you? Wow. Do you understand? So the extra time executive is somebody that says that, how strong is my bench? Not forget about my first team. What is my bench like? Do you understand? That's true. An extra time executive is somebody that says that my year is not 12 months, it's six months. I must achieve all my goals in six months. Others are planning based on 12 months. Mm. You are planning based on six months. six months. So that when things occur, do you understand? Mm. Eh? Mm. You can leapfrog. You have an advantage over the others. Mm. Interesting. Now, what will come to the emotion of love and lust? What differentiate both of them? Sometimes it's motive. Motive. Yes. So lust and love do the same thing. They spend. They some of them spend. They, they, both of them spend reckless. Or, or sorry, spend very well on people that on their on their victors or victims. So why are people describing lust to be the evil one and love be the good one? Okay. For example, if I'm buying spending on a girl. Mm. Eh, eh, so that I can sleep with her and take advantage of her. And I'm spending on a girl because I love her, I want to marry her, I want to make her the best version of herself. Mm. Do you understand? I'm doing the same thing, spending, but the motive is different. The outcome, the objective is different. Do you understand? Is there any evil within those out the outcomes or they are just the same thing? They, they can never be the same thing. One has an evil or a selfish motive behind it. The other has a selfless motive behind it. You call it selfish. Uh, what if the other person is aware of it that this one, okay, you're just spending on me because there is no you want to here. So can both of the I'm saying that, that both of them are you, you want to exploit the person. You want to exploit the person. 
spending he, yes and you are doing it for your own selfish gain it is selfish it is selfish okay yes it is selfish when the person is partaking in it yes so for example mm. i'll give you one example of a a woman um her husband convinced her that to enjoy sex better they should have sex with someone else so three of them it was the husband and then the, the wife and then one other lady mm. do you understand so you don't care whether it hurts the other person you don't care what it does to the other party. It's just that you, 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 oh, I'm having fun. I enjoy it. Do you understand? Mm, mm. So we call what kind of what what, what will you call that? Do you call that love? Now, if you call it selfish, the other person that the other the top partner that was in, in, that was brought into the game, she's aware of it. So she understands everything of it, and maybe she's paid for it. So can that be that the man is selfish? Wouldn't you think the other partner, the other lady to that come in, is also selfish? Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course. And so that means it's too waiting. You can so that means loss cannot always be detrimental. It means that you can loss can also be in a positive way. Never. Never. Because if the motive is wrong, eh, the decisions can never be right. This is the example you give now. Can you say the motive is wrong? Why not? Okay, one party does not enjoy it, eh? And the other party enjoys it. For that for this to even happen in the first place. One party is dehumanized by it. The other party is exploiting it and then you say that it's not it's not co it's not co healthy for both parties that so it's just an example now mm. if both of them like it like that mm. if they revel in it they love exactly it what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. that's a different thing yes, uh -huh. that's, that's a I'm different thing about. okay that's a different uh -huh. thing it's a different thing okay so that's exactly where i'm, where I'm coming from mm -hmm. well, so mm -hmm. once, when you say someone is mm -hmm. lost now or something and mm -hmm. both of them are in party to mm -hmm. it can mm -hmm. can it be a negative loss mm -hmm. that means it can also be a, on the good side of it mm -hmm. so now coming to uh, envy and jealousy how, how do you differentiate both of them and can can there be positive envy or jealousy or it has to always be on the negative part side so if we go into the bible mm. the, the the words are different jealousy is taken from the greek word anav envy is taken from the greek word prios okay eh? jealousy eh? Is taken from the word zealous. Okay. That word means zeal. So when you look at jealousy in the Bible, it actually means passion or zeal. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Yes, the Greek word is zealous, zeal. Okay, I see. Eh? Now, that's why the Bible says God is a jealous God. It doesn't say God is an envious God. Jealousy means that I'm passionate for you, I want the best for you, I'm protecting you. A husband will be jealous if somebody is paying attention to his wife, true or false, true. because he loves her. So mm. that jealousy is actually healthy resentment. Okay. Do you understand? Mm. So the difference is that in that context where the Bible puts it, the mm. King James Version, mm. jealousy is positive resentment, envy is negative resentment. Do you understand? Okay, envy can only, how do you think envy, envy, how, envy can envy always be? I've heard the people say that when you are envious of someone, you work to try to be like person or better than the person that's jealousy not envy envy is where you are jealous of somebody and you kidnap the person and kill the person okay. yes 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 so if it if it if it motivates you positively it's uh -huh. jealousy if it motivates you negatively it's envy oh interesting so yes. that is the most yes. perfect yes 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 interesting yes if you look at joseph mm. eh, joseph's brother sold him into slavery mm. he wasn't jealous he was envy so what about hatred? Uh -huh. Hatred is also negative as well. It's also negative because when you hate people, mm, it's not like you dislike them. You hate them. You are ready to do anything. Mm. You're ready to kill. Mm. You know, yeah. there are politicians who dislike certain principles, um, certain beliefs of a certain political party, but you never see them speaking ill against. You, you, they don't even speak ill. Mm. You understand? Yeah. There are politicians who disagree in terms of values or principles mm. with others and you even find them defending those other people mm. at certain occasion where um, occasion demands it mm. yeah. so that's hatred means that you know i dislike you obsessively and i'm coming after you 
I will cheat you. I will manipulate things in your dis in your disfavor. Mm. If if needs be, I will wipe you out and things like that. Wow, what about admiration? Admiration. Yes. Okay. It can always be on the positive side when you admire something. Hmm. It depends on what you admire because people admire the wrong things nowadays. People admire <laughs> people for yeah. All the people that are trained a lot now in society, you know, um, some of them have no reason to be admired in a sane society. In a sane society. Okay. okay. So, so, how about um, when you're talking about uh, hopelessness? When can someone get to a point? Is there anything like a point of being completely hopeless? Yeah, it's just like you have to look at it like a battery. When a battery is completely flat, uh. Uh, yes. When a battery is 20%, uh going to 15 percent mm. when it's 15 percent your phone tells you that you know what you, you, you have to charge it huh? when that battery gets to one percent zero percent that's what you call is not we now call it despondency it's no longer hopelessness now you call despondency yes which means there's no longer hope the person is totally hopeless because what's that coming out of that state very good just like when your battery is low you charge it mm. to come out of that state you now have to start applying the hope principle the principles of hope do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are many of those principles that we spoke about. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So when we, when we talk about frustration, what, 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 does, what does it do? Does frustration propel someone to do something uh, positively or it propels on a negative angle? Now, it depends on the individual. It depends on the individual. Some people were frustrated at the Naira scarcity. And yes. what did they do? <laughs> they went and begin, be, began to uh, vandalize banks. Yes. You know, they began to loot arson. You know and all that so frustration depends on the individual some people will have the same go through the same thing mm -hmm. and say okay how can i cut my spending and it will lead them to go on a path of financial discipline yes and so people will go through the same thing and say okay how can i do trade by butter okay i can't buy with cash do you understand but i sell yams eh? Eh, and tim gozi she sells and eh, this thing let me exchange. Or oh, people will come out with creative ways to do things. Mm. You know, so it all depends on individual. Mm. Somebody is vandalizing, the other is creating a new source of money. Does it also equal with uh, devastation? When somebody is devastated, do they do they align with frustration? Uh, devastation will be like an intense form of frustration. Yes. Okay. But, yes. But even people who are there are people who are devastated who mm. come out of it. Okay. So that means both of them can be different from each other so give practical examples of people that you, you're coaching and things have changed their lives okay um there was a guy that had an issue with public speaking he was afraid of public speaking okay. mm? and what we did was very simple very very simple mm. we just said to him that listen who do you admire in public speaking mm? first thing you have to look for the picture that you want you need to find the picture that you want he found he said okay i like martin luther king we found some Martin Luther King videos on YouTube mm. and we made him watch it, those videos every morning for 15 minutes. Mm. First thing every morning for 15 minutes. We made him do it for um, three months non-stop every day. Mm -hmm. And today he's doing amazingly well in public speaking. Wow. Yes. You know, so I told you mm. a word intensely internalized becomes an image. That's true. An image intensely internalized becomes an experience. <laughs> do you understand? So that's very very crucial okay now when we talk about uh, attention and energy what, what what do you mean by it attention is everything attention is wealth attention is health attention is intuition attention is security okay. once you lose your attention you have lost everything mm. yes whatever gets your attention has gotten you it's only a matter of time yes so that it, can, that can, it, can, it can also be like focus Yes, but guess what? Listen to this. When Delilah got Samson's attention, mm. she had gotten him. It was only a matter of time. She just increased her intensity. That's it. Ooh, yeah. Whatever gets true. your attention has gotten you. Wow. Uh, yeah. A lot of us chase wealth. We should be chasing attention. How? Very simple. I'll give you an example. You see, a carpenter that gives attention to carpentry eh, will profit more from it than an oil and gas Eh, executive that does not give attention to oil and gas. So the real wealth is not what you are doing, it's the attention you are paying to what you are doing. Wow. I'll give you an example. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don King became the greatest boxing promoter of all time. 
He came out of jail to promote boxing. At that time, boxers were getting paid fifty thousand dollars per fight. Hmm. He promised Muhammad Ali and George Foreman five million dollars per fight. Wow! How did he get it? Attention, because he didn't have any money in his pocket. Guess what he did? He went back home and just started thinking, "How can I do this?" That was his main focus for that season. Focused on only one thing. I told you, one is the most important number in life. Mm, mm. That's right. Is the number of prosperity. He was just giving attention to it, attention to it. And guess what? He got an, he got an idea. I told you that if water gets to 32 degrees, it will freeze. If your attention gets to a particular level, it will crystallize with an idea. He got an idea. Let me go to Zaire to convince Mobutu Seseko to host the game and to come up with the funds. Guess what? He didn't have any money in his pocket. He went to Zaire, spoke to Mobutu Seseko that, see, if we bring Muhammad Ali, it can make your country become very popular. Mm. Pele made Brazil popular. That game, that match, mm. made Zaire very popular as a country. He came up with the money. Wow. From no dollar in his pocket, mm. he got $10 million. $10 million. Why? He gave attention to it. If I'm a carpenter and I have just two logs of wood, mm. and I give attention to those wood, that, that wood, I give attention to it, I will get more from that wood mm, than a country is getting from oil and, oil and gas. That's why there are countries that make more from shoes than other countries that make from oil and gas. Mm. It's attention. Attention. Attention is the real wealth. A person who gives attention to comedy will make more than somebody who is making planes and selling for a living. Mm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So now, how do you talk... I, what, what, when you say goals and system, how do you describe it? You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Goals don't make a difference. It's systems that make the difference. Goals don't make a difference. Yeah. If I have a goal and I'm chasing it. Man, do you know how many people we coach that have goals and never fulfill their goals? I mean, and that's, and that's why they come for coaching. Eh? Do you know how many countries have Vision 2020, Vision 2040, Vision this, Vision that, and never, never, it never sees light of day. Do you know how many countries say that, oh, in five years' time, in 10 years' time, there will be full, there will be total electricity, there will be 100% electricity in this country. Mm -hmm. um, do you know how many countries said that, oh, in the, uh, X, Y number of years, there will be no more carbon emissions, and uh, we'll, we'll achieve carbon neutrality. Every, in countries, con companies, organizations, you see a lot of goals that never get fulfilled. So how does system come into it? Thank you very much. Systems is what makes a difference. Oh. Now, a system is a boundary that makes it impossible for that goal not to be fulfilled. Okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> a goal yeah. is a course of action that is time-bound. A system eh, is a boundary that makes it impossible for a goal not to be fulfilled. Wow. Let me give you an... Let me, let me, let me show you. Let me show you. I'm sure. Break it down for you. Now, I see I have a goal. I want to use my life as a personal example. Mm. I was going to finish a particular research last year. Huh? As at March, I didn't like the way I was going. March, not even December, not se September. As at March, I didn't like the way I was going. You know what I did? I said, if I spend three days consecutively in my house, no going out, no coming in, no phones, no food, no friends, I will, I will, go, I will go a long way. You know what I did? I called my neighbor. I said, let's sign a document. Lock me up for three days. If I come out, I'll give you half a millionaire. We sign the document. I stay in the place for three days. I'm doing work, no doubt. Every day, I come out, <laughs> make my goal. Bam! We do it the second time because I liked what happened the first time. Do it the second time. Yeah, Bam! Yes. In there. Yes. You know what? Do it. It's a system. I know that I'm not going to give my neighbor half a millionaire. If I, so I'm not going to come out. So they are bound by something. You see, it's boundaries. The problem with human beings is that we hate boundaries. That's true. We hate boundaries. Everybody wants to do as he likes. Yes. We hate boundaries. Yes, that's true. Let me tell and you something. True. The reason why some nations have order mm. and some they don't have order is boundaries. The reason why you can urinate on the streets in a corner mm. is because the boundaries allow for it to happen. Mm. There are certain places where you cannot do it. They have systems that make it impossible for you to do it. Wow. There are systems. So how can people build it in their personal lives? Thank you. Very good. There are three ways. We call it the price pact, the image pact, or the accountability pact. The price pact. Okay. 
say that, okay, I'm going to fulfill this goal. If I don't do it, I'll lose also amount of money. Okay. Yes. So you just set aside a part, part of money. Then you have, yeah, there's a part. Do you understand? Just like me, uh -huh, it's constrained me to do it. Yes. I have a friend. He goes to the gym now because whenever he doesn't go, his gym instructor deducts 50,000 naira. Okay. Yes. Price packed. It works. Wow. It works. That's it works. Okay. But not for everybody. Yes. The other two packs are what you call an image pact and an accountability pact. Okay. Do you understand? You see, you don't digest food because you have a digestive goal. Mm. You digest food because you have a digestive system. System. Mm. System. Yes. Mm. Your body digests food not because there's a goal, mm. but there's a system. You are breathing not because you have a goal to breathe. Mm. If not, every human being will still be alive today. Yes, that's true. But because people die because the respiratory system packs up. It's systems. Yeah. Systems that matter, not goals. Okay. Let me tell you something. Which team has a relegation goal? Yeah. Any, any, does any team in the Premiership have a relegation goal? Not at all. But would teams get relegated? Sure. Why? Because they have relegation systems. That automatically it check people Thank you. It's, it, yes. When, 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 eh, when your coach is at loggerheads with most of the players, mm -hmm. the morale is down. That, those are the systems necessary eh, for teams to underperform. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. When there's no cohesion, do you understand? When some people are trying to outshine others, those are the systems needed for relegation. So you said the image pact. So yeah, it let's image talk, pact? Very good. Let's talk about the image pact. Mm -hmm. Image pact means you come out and say, this is who I am. This is my image. This is who I am. Do you understand? Eh? If I come out and tell you that I'm a fruitarian, do you think I'm going to go into Chicken Republic eh, ordering a piece of chicken and sitting down to devour the chicken? I've told you I'm a fruitarian. Do you understand? There's an image there. Do you get it? Mm. As a system, the other day they found some classified documents in Joe Biden's house. Do you understand? Mm. It became headline news because because you are a president, classified documents cannot be found in your house. Okay. You know. So when you attain certain, when you put yourself in a certain pedestal, there are certain things that are, that are not required of you. It puts you in a structure, a system whereby you can't do those things. Do you understand? Mm. You can't do those things. What about the other part? It's an accountability, accountability part. part. It means means that. You have people who hold you accountable. There are people who hold you accountable. For example, a, 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 a parish owner, a priest, a Catholic priest or a parish pastor mm. or an executive of a company mm. cannot do certain things because if you do them, eh, you will be removed from your position. So you are accountable to certain people. But I'll give you a better example. Grameen Bank is one of the most successful banks in the world, started by Mohammed Yunus, Nobel Prize winner. They have been able to give billions of dollars of loans to so many women. They have been able to rescue a whole nation, Bangladesh, out of poverty. They give collateral free loans. Free loans to women. No collateral. How? What is the boundary? The boundary is the accountability system. To, for you to qualify for a loan, you must belong to a solidarity group of eight people, eight women. The eight women vouch for you. So if the person defaults, eh, it's not just the person, it's eight people that will suffer it. Do you understand? So there's a system. The system there's a system. system. Do you understand? It's just like, you know, when you belong to a certain family, you can't just marry without telling your parents. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There's accountability. So yeah. accountability. So three things that propel us as human beings. Mm -hmm. Image. Your image. Do you understand? Why can't you sell your votes? Your image. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Why is it that celebrities don't take third class? Do you understand? Why is it that celebrities don't take boss? Mm -hmm. Image. So image packed works. Okay. Yes, yes. That's true. Accountability works as well. And then a price pack works because people, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Is there a higher, a higher one of all these uh, three packs? There's what you call the pain pact. Okay. If a thing really pains a person, eh, he will avoid it. That is the highest. Let me tell you, that's, that's not the highest. The highest is the passion pact. When a person is passionate about a thing, he will do anything. The Bible says love is as powerful as death. And jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Many waters cannot quench love. The greatest part is your passion part. Wow. If a people are passionate about a thing, nobody can resist an idea whose time has come. Mm. So the highest part is the passion part, followed by the pain part. Let me tell you something. Mm. Eh? If you like sugar, eh? and whenever you take sugar, mm. you begin to vomit, as in you won't be able to sleep. Mm. And let me tell you something. Let me give you this example. I have a friend. Her name is Benzo. Beautiful, pretty lady. So pretty lady. She doesn't sleep well. She needs, she, she needs to sleep well. But guess what happened? Eh? Mm. She started exercising. 
and the quality of her sleep began to get better, began to get better, began to get better. And guess what? Today she exercises every day, hours, so that because she knows that when I exercise, I sleep better. Mm. So it was the pain eh, of sleeplessness that is making her exercise. Okay. Can you see? Mm. So the system eh, that gets her to exercise every day is what sleeplessness. Wow. This one, when she sleeps, so when she exercises, the quality of her sleep sleep is enhanced. Do you understand? Wow. So what? How does that tie down to countries and like Nigeria now? How does system tie down to? Yes. Making yes. Work? Very simple. You know. In a system, man, you have to say, what is it going to cost me if I don't do this thing? For example, I, I laugh at people. You have a goal. Eh? There's no system bound to it. For example, you don't fulfill your goal and you still travel abroad. And when you travel abroad, you're in business class oh, and you didn't meet your goal. Mm. It's not a goal. You were just fooling yourself. Mm. Eh? You were just... You, all you had was a... Well, all you had was um, a, a decoration. A decoration on paper. Mm. It was not a goal. It was not a, there's no system. You just wrote some words down. You just wrote some words down. What is it going to cost you? Do you understand? What is it going to cost you? There are football players that said that if this thing doesn't happen, X, Y, Z, I'm retiring. Do you understand? Mm. The music stars that said, if I don't sell this number of records, I'm retiring. You know, there were strong consequences. Eh? And those that eventually fulfill things, eh? let me tell you something. I don't need to for a, a person who loves Arsenal doesn't need a price pact eh, to watch Arsenal. Mm, that's true. The system propelling him is a passion pact. Mm. He will watch Arsenal any day. Any In time. fact, before the game starts, two hours before, they are talking about the match. Mm, you yes, understand? Yes. So, you have to look for the five. If you are not propelled by a passion pact, mm. it's going to be a price pact. I'm sorry, a pain pact. If it's not a pain pact, it's going to be a price pact. Not a price pact, it's going to be an identity pact. No identity pact is going to be an accountability pact, but one of those five must work for you if you are a human being who has a legal right to remain on this earth. Wow, wow, interesting. Okay, now let's come to uh, building your unique selling points. Oh, how do you do that? Wow, every human being needs a unique selling point. The greatest rapper was one of the most metaphorical. Do you understand? Comedians have a unique selling point, and that's why they are they are they are they are, they are relevant. You need a unique selling point. Mm. Mr. A cannot sound like everybody. Your meat pie cannot taste like everybody's meat pie. Mm. Do you understand? Your events cannot look like everybody's events and you want to still be relevant. No, everybody needs a unique selling point. And guess what? Mm? Your unique selling point is your aroma. When you take potato and sweet potato, mm. they smell the same. But when you take it through fire, eh? Plantain does not smell like potato when you fry them. Do they smell the same thing? No. When you pass yourself through fire of life, your unique selling point comes out. If you see people whose unique point has not selling out, whether he's a photographer, whether he's a shoemaker, whether he's a hairdresser, whether he's an events planner, whether he's an interior decor and does not have a unique selling point, they have not been through the fire of life. And I'll tell you the different fires. When you heat anything, the aroma comes out. When you heat yourself, your unique selling point comes out. I'll take it again. When you heat a, any ingredients, the aroma comes out. Mm. When you heat yourself, your unique selling point comes out. Mm. Yes, your unique selling point is your aroma. What's that fire? Intense practice. Intensity is fire. I told you the difference between consistency and intensity. Mm. Intensity is your fire. Intensity is your fire. Mm. Intense practice. It could be intense thinking. It could be working under intense working conditions mm. that bring out your fire. Mm? Whether you are in an office that the work conditions are intense, eh? Or you are doing intense practice. When JJ Okocha came out with that, his um, side step, do you understand? He was practicing intensely when the idea came. Intensity brings out your unique selling points. Wow. Intensity brings out your unique selling points. Intense hours of work, intense years of labor. It could be weeks or years. It could be days. Mm. But the common factor is intensity. Wow. Intensity. T Pain came out with a unique selling point, auto tune. He listened to about a thousand records non-stop. He was just listening to find out what is unique. And then he found his unique selling point in auto-tune. Wow. Intensity brings out your unique selling point. So I hope that you, you, you key into that. No, that is very powerful. Now, what, what can you say about introspection and self-reflection? They are very necessary. Introspection, going in to think, self-reflection, thinking about a lot of things. A lot of people have discovered their breakthroughs 
by introspection. People have discovered their breakthroughs in reflection. You know, I mean, look at some of the greatest businessmen. They said that, ah, by the way, come to think of it, I won't mention the name, but a particular businessman who went bankrupt, billionaire, Forbes billionaire, he has come, he was bounced back. Mm. He was thinking of terminating and crashing on all, 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 closing down all his businesses. He just said, like, ah, come, in a moment of introspection, he said that, ah, I've been through something similar in the past now. And I bounced back. That I'll bounce back from this one. Mm. Let me give you one more. When Germany won the World Cup in Italian 90, Lothar Matthäus was going to take one of the penalties. And he didn't take it. He t told Andreas Bremer to take the penalty. And they asked him, why did you ask Bremer to take the penalty? You are the lead penalty taker. And he said, you know what? There's a way I feel when I'm, whenever I'm going to lose a penalty based on introspection and reflection. Mm. And when that penalty was given, I felt that way. Mm. And I asked Bremer to take it. Germany eventually won Italian 90. Wow. Reflection, let me tell you something, because reflection makes you aware of the past. And the future is a replay of the past. I'm not saying an exact replay of the past, but it's because life is cyclical. If you understand the past very well, you can predict the future. You can predict the future. My friend, Alan Littman, has been able to pro predict the American president correctly since 1982 because of deep retrospection and reflection. Mm. Yeah. Now, can you talk about the impact of past experiences on our emotions? Of course. <laughs> People that are traumatic, they are traumatic because of past experiences on their emotions. I'll give you an example of a woman, a girl who got raped by her lesson teacher. And the lesson teacher beat her after raping her. When she gave birth to a daughter, she never had a lesson teacher for her daughter. Wow. Whenever any man came near her daughter, she shouted. Hmm? So you can't say that. I mean, let me tell you something. You are a combination of all your experiences. Mm -hmm. Except experiences that you decide to deliberately overcome. And even overcoming them, you must now begin to internalize a new experience before you manifest it. Now, if you, if you, if you master your emotions, can it bring a future relationship generally? Why not? Why not that um, you have a husband who never gets angry? Mm. Eh? That you have a boss who never insults his subordinates? He treats them well even when they expect him to be angry? Why do you think that people left? Do you know how many people left Donald Trump when he was in office? For Ryan Priebus, Steve Bannon, eh? um, Omar Rosa Manigault, Anthony Scaramucci, Sean Spicer, Nikki Haley, John Bolton. Why? When you have somebody... Who feels like he can never be wrong? Everybody's feel like going to feel. I can't work. I can't work with this. That me too. I'm. 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 I'm I have my self worth. I can't. I can't work on this person. Wow, interesting. Now you just like righteous anger because yes, people talk about see ah you can be you can be angry righteously. Someone did something that that is true that your anger is based on based on righteous anger. Is anything like that? The anger that makes you to come out and vote, is it good or bad? It's good. The anger that makes you say that, listen, the way, I mean, I grew up in an abusive household and that anger makes me say that I will never abuse my wife. Is it good or bad? Okay. An anger that makes me say that I've been bankrupt before and will never be bankrupt again. Never. Is it good or bad? It's good. Wow, come on. You have righteous <laughs> anger in many ways, in many expressions. Now, how do you balance uh, uh, logical thinking in decision making? Ah, logical thinking. It's very necessary. So it's, that means how do you balance emotions and logical thinking in okay, making decisions? Okay, in making decisions. Yeah, yeah. There, has to be, there has to be a balance. So. Because you know most people, when well, they make decisions based on emotions yes. rather than logic. Of course. Uh -huh. So how do you bring balance within it? Because sometimes I you hear that people because of that decision that was made out of emotion, it usually is most likely a wrong decision. Yes. Because it's made out of emotion. Yes. So, but when it's coming from a logical reasoning, yeah. it's usually right. That some people, they avoid anything when it comes to making a decision. They talk about that it has to come from a logical reason. If it's not logical, they don't make any decision out of emotion. They don't make decision when they're angry. They don't make decision when they're happy. They don't make decision. They just have to come out when it comes to they are logical in the reasoning for they make that decision. So how do you balance those two equations? emotions and logic when it comes to making decisions um you need to be in a very calm state before taking all those decisions this is why um 
um, I've seen people do, you know, when a footballer scores a goal and he's happy and he takes his shirt off and gets a red card. Mm. Now, he took the decision in a state of what happiness, right? Was it a good decision? He took off his shirt and he was given a red card. Is it a good yes, decision? No, yes. Yeah, so it's not just, I believe in that, that sometimes we don't just take wrong decisions when we are sad. We also take wrong decisions when we are very overly excited at times. Overly excited at times. So I also believe in that balance, that balance. Sometimes time can give you that balance. So when you give a decision two weeks, sometimes two months, two weeks for maybe, should I buy that thing, that item on the shelf? Two months for, okay, should I loan that person that money? Maybe five months, should I get married to that person? You know, things like that. What's the best way to approach uh, forgiveness and letting go of grudges? The best way to give, I think, forgiveness and letting go of grudges. I, I, my f most preferred formula is what I call uh, emotional distancing and thought replacement. I can give you an example. This is a clear example. A woman uh, was in an abusive relationship with her husband. The husband also spent the money she was supposed to use to send her daughter to school. Do you understand? Mm. This woman was battling it. It was in a trauma of bitterness and unforgiveness. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. Now, what did she do? This is what I call thought replacement. She began to recraft eh, her words of affirmations and in, 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 in line with thought replacement. Okay. She said, I'm angry that my husband beats me because I appreciate self-love. I'm angry eh, that my husband spent the money for our, our daughter's tuition because I appreciate education for my daughter. So she now recrafted, recrafted the, her um, affirmations to say that I love my daughter's education. I love my self-worth. I love being respected and appreciated. Do you understand? Mm. Do you understand the, the flow? Yes. So she started to focus more on my daughter's education rather than my, my husband spent the money. Do you understand? And I told you, back to what I said, which is a strong thing. Words internally, intensely internalized, will become images. Images intensely internalized will become experiences. How does it, how does it tie down to forgiving someone for being yes, caught? Yes, yeah, because you, have not, you have not... Let me tell you something. Let me, listen, mm. listen, listen to this. I was in a hospital one day when I was uh, having my bout to suicide. Mm? And I was feeling pain because uh, they were treating me for infectious hepatitis and jaundice. And then I saw a nurse come into the uh, hospital. This nurse fine. <laughs> ah, Benzik. Jesus. Benzik, when I saw this nurse, eh, I forgot all the pain that was inside me. Benzik, let me tell you something. There are things that, there's a way you can fix your mind on certain things that you will forget people who have offended you. Let me tell you something. Mm. When you begin to succeed, mm. you won't you will look at those people that mocked you and laugh. You won't even, the power, the power to retaliate won't even be there because you, you prefer to use that power more on advancing your business. Do you understand? So it's a battle of relativity. Okay. Yeah, it's a battle of relativity. It depends. You see, there is nothing like forgiveness is attention. If you give attention to something else, forgiveness will come easy. But you have people talk about, say, I can never forgive. No, so because you have not found, you have not, you see, for you, for you to be offended, you have to be idle. It's true. If yeah, you are right. engaged, yeah, eh, you, if, you are, if your brain is really engaged, mm. eh, yeah, you will break you from those things. I'm telling you. Wow. Unforgiveness is idleness. That's Unforgiveness true. is idleness. Now, how do you deal with, uh, how can somebody build resilience? What, what can you describe about building resilience and building it? See, resilience is attention. Okay. And attention is repetition. The more attentive you are to a thing, the more passionate you are. The more passionate you are, the more resilient you'll be. Interesting. Yeah. What, what, what is the overall thing someone can do to improve your life overall when it comes to your emotions? Hmm. Improving your life overall when it comes to your emotions mm. is being deliberate. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a very strong on singularity. Pick two emotions that you can foster and foster them effortlessly and you have an amazing life. You know, see, happiness is a skill. You remember what Richard Bandler said, the founder of Neuro, uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming, he said, happiness is like riding a bicycle. 
the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Yeah. So I believe in emotional engineering. I believe that you can engineer and engender emotions. And once you understand the principles on how it works, that it works like a machine, it works like a skill, it works like um, something you're trying to build, a plant you're trying to cultivate, it becomes effortless after a while. Wow. What are emotional triggers and how do you approach dealing with them? There are so many. Some people, an emotional trigger is something as simple as they're, they're on a period. Once some women go on their period, they become very irritable. An emotional trigger is coming back home to a house that has no light. An emotional trigger is uh, having a bad day at work. There are so many things that trigger us emotionally. Mm, sure. Yes. And do you overcome it? Okay, simple. It's back to, back to everything we've spoken about, emotional maturity. For example, if I'm triggered by um, painful periods, eh? if I change my diet, eh? I can overcome painful periods just by changing my diet. Do you understand? Mm. If it's the fact that I had a bad day at work, mm. eh, I need to now get to the point that I know how to convert frustration to innovation. Mm. Do you understand? Understanding how the brain converts it to innovation. So what are you saying? What are you saying when those things happen? Okay. Do you understand? Because your words are most powerful at vexation points. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So can you discuss the role of positive psychology when it comes to your emotions? What is positive psychology and how does it affect your emotions? Are they, are, they tied, are they related with each other or they are different from each other? Positive psychology and emotions. Uh, you, can't, you can't practice psychology eh, or anything that has to do with the mind without engaging some form of the emotions. Because if you think about a thing, you eventually feel it. Yes. You think about a thing, mm. you eventually feel it. So you can't separate ultimately. There are two different things. Your emotions are not the same thing as your thinking or your psychology, but they, they work hand in hand with each other. So, um, if you practice positive psychology, uh, if you say, for example, you, you're, you're, you're going to look at a problem as a challenge, mm. or you're going to look at a frustration as a billion dollar innovation, uh, yes, eventually, if you internalize it sufficiently, you're going to feel like that. You're going to feel like, oh, this is it. Does anxiety help someone or mix or, or work against someone? What can you say about being anxious or being, yes, when you're anxious about anything or something? Yes, anxiety has is not the most helpful emotion. This is what happens when you are anxious. You know, there's, you you really sense some um, hormones. Eh? Adrenaline goes up. Mm. Eh? When adrenaline goes up, especially when it leads to excess cortisol into the brain, it begins to weaken your brain cells. Mm? Look, look at when a child, when a student is taking an exam and is anxious, five minutes to go, mm. anxious. A lot of mistakes happen in anxiety moments. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. In those anxious moments, a lot of mistakes happen. Like. Yes. Whether you're a footballer and in the moments of anxiety, you throw the ball over the net or you are a musician and you make a mistake in those moments of anxiety. So, but it's not the anxiety. It's your perception and how you have learned to manage yourself during the anxiety because there are some players that even in those anxious moments, that's when they play their best. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what I'm yes. Can so, someone be anxious and then do better? Yes. If you have trained yourself to that level. That's why all these daily practices of visualization, meditation are very crucial. Attention, um, enforcement is very, very better. And then it's not just your daily habits, your lifestyle habits. Am I going to focus on a few things? Those who have a more fulfilled life have few things that they focus on. Eh? They are not easily, they don't, they are not, they don't live plural lives. Do you understand? So, wow, interesting. It's very interesting. Now, to round it up, what are the final things you think you can say regarding emotions generally? What are the last words that you have to say regarding emotions? Okay. I would like to talk about the impact of um, pain and emotions. Let me give you an example. Okay. When you get to a point in your life where you are going through a bad situation, uh, that bad situation uh, can blind in you and you say, okay, I'm jumping from XYZ to ABC mm. and you're not even sure whether ABC is better than XYZ. Yeah. Do you understand? So, I just want us to be a bit careful and cautious. Mm? For example, when people were on, Nigeria was under Jonathan. Mm. Yes. We just felt like anything but Jonathan would be better. That's true. So we went from Jonathan to Buhari. Mm. You understand? 
So we need to be careful because there's a the discomfort does certain things to the brain. Eh? That it doesn't also allow you to think very clearly at times. Yes. Then the second thing I want to talk about is that it's a connection between ambition and delusion. Ambition. Yes. So a, a, somebody with political ambition will also ultimately have political delusion. Yes. The part of your brain that stimulates ambition also stimulates delusion. So you see yourself, eh, when you have 60% popularity, in your mind, you feel like 80% popularity. Mm. It's not 80%, but that's what you see as 80%. Mm. Eh? It's possible to listen to a message or listen to a rendition. Mm. And the way you felt the first time you listened to it was not the same way you felt the second or the third time. When you give a lot of things time or what we call emotional distancing, mm. you are able to assess very well mm. a lot of things. So what I would advise people to do is that they should have lifestyle habits eh, that aid for emotional mastery. Lifestyle habits that aid for emotional mastery. You want to listen to the habit or the include all what yes, you uh, talking uh, uh, about. Uh, uh, now, something just came to my mind now. The, what, 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 what would you describe, describe this kind of emotion whereby they said you see someone that maybe is an abusive relationship or at a particular kind of scenario or surrounding that is being oppressive or all of that. But rather than the person leaving it, the person is still ins insistent in it and doesn't even want any talk contrary to it. The person wants to remain in it. Say, this is what I want. This is where I want to remain. So someone will tell you that, like a case of uh, that woman, uh, they said she died because her husband was beating Osinachi. her. Osinachi. God bless you. She knew her husband was beating her. Yeah. She knew that whatever did happen, this, this and all of that. But she said, no, that this is what I want. So, there are some people that they say they get to a point, like I used to hear this lady talk about the fact that her boyfriend used to slap her all the time. I like, go to a point that she, if he doesn't slap her, she's not happy. She enjoys when yeah, he yeah, slaps yeah, her. Yeah. So she becomes comfortable with it and that became her way of dealing with it. And there is no way you can tell her otherwise. What kind of emotion is that? Mm. Or is, this, is it on the positive side or can it be broken or what? What what, 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 what happens when someone gets to that kind of stage? Yeah, she had become very tolerant of it. So she had now um, begin to build a level of tolerance that now um, grew into what you call an affinity for it. That it doesn't become a problem for no, her. No, no, yeah, she no. Yeah, she, 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 she now enjoys it. She now enjoys it. She now enjoys it. Yeah. And you see, that ultimately has to do with habits are one thing, but your perception is another thing. So your perception, eh, your will ultimately determine how a habit would manifest in your life or how it would, the, 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 the uh, trajectory that it will take. So let me give you an example. When somebody, when you tell somebody that exercise can be very painful, mm. whether you like it or not, running a marathon is not a joke. But there are people who run marathons with joy. They look forward to it, they practice for it, they train for it and all that. There's what is called learned helplessness. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, eh, I don't even want to look at it from the angle of learned helplessness. Mm. Um, with any habit, there are people who run a marathon. A marathon can be very gruesome. It can be grueling, mm. you know. The first few days after a marathon, you know, you are not yourself. Your body needs time to recuperate. And you see people still gear up for the next marathon and all that. The same thing with pregnancy. Some people go through very painful pregnancies, tumultuous pregnancies, and they still want to get pregnant again. Mm. Now, first of all, is your cognition, is your, your, your perspective. What do you see? Do you like it? Do you want it? Mm. When you want a thing, eh, your entire being begins to look for ways to make it happen. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh. So once, first of all, if you desire it, eh, the next thing is, what are the principles you are putting in place to get it? If you work with the right principles and you have the right intensity or frequency, then it will come to pass. So if a woman is getting abused mm, and is not saying no to it, I mean, people were in slavery for years, years, years and years. Do you understand? They were being raped and they were in slavery. But as long as they said, we can't continue like this, they eventually came out. Do you understand? So, but if they did not want to, slavery would still be preponderant today. If so, the first thing is that there must be a cognition and perspective that is where you say there's conviction that I don't want this. 
So for people like that who get to that level of learned helplessness, eh, if you look down, they are not they have not come to a state where they say, enough is enough, I'm tired of this, I'm not doing this anymore. They they have come to a state of learned helplessness and repetition is energy. Repetition is emotion. Because they have repeated it over time, they have now fallen in love with it. This and like I remember what I said in the beginning, repetition is emotion. Repetition is emotion. It, repetition is not just energy. It's not just attention. Repetition is also emotion. And I told you, repetition is belief. If you repeat it, you will believe it. If you repeat a thing, you may eventually believe in that thing. Do you think that, what, that, 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 that is what leads to... What do you think might be the major cause of divorce? Is it lack of management of emotions or how? There are many things. There are many factors that lead to divorce. I mean, with, with the kind of research that has been done in the last 10 years on divorce, you look at so many factors. Um, um, first of all, it's the character of both parties. First of all, character of both parties. Uh, number two, you look at the purpose of those parties, their, 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 their life purpose, their life mission. Mm -hmm. Also, then even environment, culture, these things shape things. Because if you look at 50 years ago, eh, women had minimized roles. Mm -hmm. So there was less friction between the man and the woman. But 50 years later, the role of a woman is not... And I'm not, I'm not saying that women should not have larger ambitions or goals or that society should not change where women evolve and become more relevant. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying that in a place where a lot of things become... Uh, begin to suffer a lot of disalignments. Yeah, eh? the policy, then, of course, and all that. And all yeah, that you know. So, um, but it's not just that. Eh? Even things like finances and things... and and, and financial landscape of, of society that we live in today. Our, our society is more materialistic. Mm. So if a woman does not get as much as she wants compared to 50 years ago, eh, it's going to make her cast her in a certain light by society. Mm. If children don't go to a certain kind of school or people don't enjoy a certain kind of life, you know? Mm. So all those things put together has contributed to that predicament of divorce that we have today. But it's not just that. Even cultures add to that. Mm. Cultures add to that. Um, our cultural um dilution has also added to that so 50 years ago things that were taboos are now normal that's what i'm trying to even yes. bring up so, it looks like those days are yeah, yes yeah, yes 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 yeah now. but it's like i said it's a combination of so many factors eh? so many factors that are taboo, yes normal. societal the society has changed society has changed society has changed eh? roles have changed in our days you know a woman is expected to even contribute to the expenses of some families, you know. Mm. So the man is not just working and providing. Mm. The woman is providing as well, you know. So the women don't have as much energy to love their husbands because part of that energy, they are focusing on work, generating money. They also have to... So that's why the women don't have enough energy. Parenting is dying because there's less energy for parenting now. Women have to do more things. So the energy that they would have given to parenting is going towards building a business, building a brand, okay. becoming... Yeah, yes. I told you that life is about energy and attention. Mm. Yes. So whenever a, pe a particular thing is suffering, it's because the energy deposit in that area is depleted. Life is energy. So we can go back to the time of old. Do you think the time marriage, the marriage ways of old makes it is much better than... than I'm not that. saying that that's the only reason. And I'm not advocating that women should not work or that women should not... Um, uh, that women should just be, all women should be housewives. No. I'm saying that there are different factors that have led to challenges in homes and parenting. And, and it's not just marriages that have suffered. Parenting has suffered. It's not just mm. parenting that has suffered. Christianity and values have suffered. Morality mm. has suffered. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The intense pressure has not just affected marriages alone. It has affected morality. Mm. Eh? It has affected values. It has affected even the environment is suffering today. Wow. Yes, yeah. Because people are using more cosmetic, for example, because people are um, yeah, re, um, consuming more energy, it's affecting even the climate, the, the environment, the planet. Do you understand? So all these factors, so you can't just say that what is. We can say, okay, these are the two main factors leading to divorce. Number one, people are not groomed enough well for marriage. The character is not there. They don't understand mm. the values. They don't understand the principles on how marriage works. So mm. there's a lot of marital illiteracy. Mm. Yeah, so that's the number one factor, number one factor, number one factor. Uh, and tied to that would also also be, you know, the, the fact that 
purpose, a lot of people, they are not, they, they are not, their purposes and visions are not aligned. Mm. So after a while, the cracks begin to show. Especially when people want to chase their purpose. And no, no one person is not willing to lay down their purpose for the, the, for the marriage. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. These are all powerful. Woo! This is quite interesting. God bless you very well for yeah. this you have done today. So finally, share with people how they can be able to reach out to you in case people want to reach out to you for any form of coaching and all of that. Oh, well, um, you can reach out to me on Instagram. Send me a DM. My Instagram handle is Olusonya Adekome. And um, you can go to my corporate website, emplnigeria.com, www.emplnigeria.com. Yeah. Wow, interesting. Thank you so much once again. You're welcome. This is this is highly impactful and it's yes. been quite long. I think it, I'm sure it's much longer than the yeah. first one. Yeah. But I believe it's quite insightful and interesting. Thank you very much. So that is it guys with Mr. Adekomi Olu Sonia. I'm sure you have benefited a lot in this particular episode. It's we covered a whole lot regarding mastering your emotions. So I'm sure this will help you a great deal when it comes to mastering your emotion. So do remember to like this video and also subscribe to the channel if it's your first time of coming to the channel. And don't forget to share this video one or two persons and turn on the post notification so you want to first to get notified each time we we'll upload new videos. I do my best to talk on this channel on business, mindset, self-development, entrepreneurship and also do interviews like this time to time. So this channel I do my best to make sure I give you impact that will help you your life in general and your future and this is definitely one of them so thanks once again my name is Benzik and i'm a creative entrepreneur i'll see you again next time cheers <laughs>